So today we're going to do a bit more on virtual modulus. Uh, this time it's going to be with Reactor. And rather than create one from scratch, what I'm going to actually do is to show you how to uh, change an existing, uh, well, a couple of existing ensembles um, over to be per note expression compatible. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one by Chet Singer. Um, follows a similar model each time, which one I'm going to show you a couple. Um, and Everybody knows Chet Singer, I think. So what we're going to actually do is to use um, a, a, a macro, which um, originally was developed by Mark Smart. Um, and this actually impl was implemented for the continuum. Um, and it basically outputs pitch on X, Y is for the front back, forward backwards, Z is pressure, and G is gate. There's a Z E for event, um, signals, which is the one we usually use, as you can see, reds here. Um, but there's also an audio rate one, which we use when we're mixing with signals. Um, but I'm actually not going to use that one. I'm going to use one that is exactly the same, uh, but is over OSC and is for use with the sound plane and Eigenheart, uh, because I prefer OSC due to resolution. Um, but you'll see, I've got ex it's exactly the same. The only the only difference is is that I actually have a separate pitch output here, um, whereas you would use um, X on the MIDI implementation. So remember that. So the first thing we're going to actually do is to get some send signals. Um, now, if you don't know much about a reactor, I recommend the um, reactor tutorials. Um, by ADSR, I think it's called. That, that I found those really, really good. Um, now, what we're going to do is actually in this particular example, I'm just going to use a gate and I'll use a gate. Okay, um, I think that's all I'm going to use. Oh, I'll, I'll, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to do for the moment. So remember, and then I'm going to name them as the same thing, so that I know what they are. for pitch. So remember this pitch one would be connected to X on the uh, MIDI implementation. Okay, um, the one thing about pitch is interesting as well is this already incorporates um, pitch bend. Now the next thing I'm going to do is now I need to look for the MIDI that's coming in from Reactor and replace this. So this is still the same if you're using MIDI, you still have to replace the MIDI objects. You can tell they're MIDI objects because they've got MIDI type names and they've got the little MIDI DIN symbol here as well. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna replace this with a receive. Now actually, this one's fairly easy. Usually what I would recommend is actually don't delete the object as I did then um, until you've actually connected it up so you can see where it goes to. First thing to do, can remember then to connect this receive to the appropriate one. That's the easiest thing to forget to do. Okay, and then we connect it to here. So obviously that's gate. All right, so the next thing is obviously we need to influence the pitch. Now, the thing about it is reactive people tend to use the same names for everything. So G for gate and P for pitch. Now you can see that pitch, all of these pitches all come back up to this module at the top. So it's fairly likely that this is where the pitch is done. Um, so if we actually go into this module up here, surprise, surprise, there is the note pitch. So what we do is again, create a receive, call it TVP, uh, connect there. Um, now we can actually connect this into here. Now, because this already incorporates the pitch bend, we don't actually need to include this at all. So we can get rid of this one and we can also get rid of these. And there we are. Now you'll quite often find that is the structure of them where you'll find a, some kind of pitch module which will then add the pitch bend. But So we've got some sound, so that's good. Um, now if we actually go to the panel, what we'll see is that, and this is the same with Mark Smart's thing, is that there's actually a front end that actually um, if we edit this, we can actually see the values coming from here. Um, and we can keep that or we can get rid of it as we, we choose this. Um, um, so we, we've got that. So the next thing um, we want to do here um, is I think 
actually, I think with this one, we'll actually leave it at that one, in fact. So what I'm going to now show is, um, oh, sorry, no, what I wanted to show you on here. This one's quite interesting. And in if you look at this panel, you'll see the modulation sources down here, and they uh, include mod wheel, etc. Now, actually, they use the send effects directly. So if you actually click on the um, BF here, you'll actually see, I'll oh, click the bit off, um, you'll, you'll see our sends already, so we can actually already connect this to, for example, Y, if we click. And it's already perky expression as well. Um, but however, if you, if they didn't, so for example, you'd find, we see after the touch here, and we wanted to connect it to that. Again, what we would do is we would just be looking for those MIDI messages. Now here, we actually can see something that's labeled MIDI, so that sounds like a good place to look. And here we are, here we can see all the MIDI messages. So we could do the same thing here. We could go into receive, and for example, add TB, uh, Y, and, and uh, add that to, uh, for example, the mod wheel. Um, instead, oh, uh, yeah. In fact, actually this is, well, this is actually, yeah, okay. This is a smoothing function, but never mind. So what I'm going, and we could do this with Z, etc., or whatever. So that's good. Now, I'm now gonna move on um, and show you that it's not just this particular one that's these do. You'll find that actually there's loads of them, even some of the commercial ones. So let's look at Spark, which I think everybody gets with Reactor, or it comes with Complete, I'm not sure. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, well, slightly different. So we're going to come in here and first of all insert the macro, which if I'd have been clever, I'd have cut and paste, but I'm not, so there you have it. But it doesn't take long. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Again, click them onto here, click them onto here, gates, and Y. Okay. Uh, and I'm not going to do ZE this time, I'm just going to do these three. Uh, uh, click over here, function, TBY. TBP. I just wish there was a shortcut so I could rename these. If anybody knows of a shortcut so I can go up to that menu, that, that would be very handy. Okay, now actually this follows a very similar structure. We can see the same thing going on here. So we just need to receive uh, TBG and we can click it on gate. Um, as I say, they won't always follow this. And you can see again, this has got another pitch module. I say it's pretty common just because they usually want to do this. It's got a tuning element to it as well. Uh, but again, they, they usually want to. Pitch. And then let's say, remember that the, this P always goes to X on the MIDI implementation. Um, I'm not going to worry about the pitch randomizers, etc. And you could have a look at the logic and do that as well. Um, but I'll leave the tuning logic in there. Um, <laughs> So that already works. Uh, now again, now here, um, tidying up the UI is actually a bit difficult because you see that the bitmap gets repeated. Um, so the easiest way to do this actually is just to come into the view and just make that bit invisible. Um, and then don't have to worry about it. So the next thing I want to do is actually mess about with this, um, the envelope. I want to actually make it so that I use pressure rather than this envelope. Now I'm going to just, in this particular example, I'm just going to replace it. You could, of course, be have a bit more comp, a bit more interesting logic to have it switchable, but I'm going to actually just replace it entirely. Now here we need to look at the um, what would be a VCA. Um, now we the best way to track back where this is if you can't see a module on the top level is look for the audio signals. And we can actually see here there's an output module and a generator module. Um, I'm going to actually start at the generator module because uh, <laughs> I suspect it's in there. And if we look through, oh yeah, here is the oscillators and here's the oscillator envelope. Now, here is a trick that I learned. 
Um, you do not want to be using send, um, right, send and receive for audio rate signals. Things get a little bit confused. Um, or it might be if they just come from the same object, but don't use them. And you can see that this oscillator's envelope here is actually an audio rate signal. You can tell the difference because event rates are in red and are controlled, by the way, by the control rate up here. And the black ones are the um, audio rate signal. So you can see this is an audio rate signal. So um, I don't want to do a receive. What I actually am going to do instead is to do an, add an import to this module. So I'm going to actually send this in. Um, and then what I'm going to do is delete this. Um, and then I come and then I'm going to actually insert this in here. And then from there, I'm going to take the Z audio rate into that signal. And now. Now pressure controlled, so that's useful. So now um, if we go back here, uh, because I actually deleted that envelope panel, that's why all the controls have gone here. Um, now what we're going to do um, for the last part is actually I'm going to do something similar with the Y axis. I'm going to actually replace this mod envelope here with the Y. Again, you could quite easily make this switchable. But again, here you can actually see it's on the top level. So all we need to basically do is to again create another receive module. Put it up here. Yeah. Why? Remember, you have to connect these things. And then again, I'm just going to delete it. You could leave it in place and put a gate switch here. That would be the, the obvious way to do it. But again, I'm just for demonstration purposes. Do that. And then. And so that's it. That's um, showing you that's both um, two different ensembles. Um, and you can see that they're quite simple to do. And remember, it's exactly the same for the MIDI implementation as well, just that X equals the pitch. Um, I hope you enjoy that. And I hope that that gives you something to make Reactor a little more useful.